Good morning. I'm here to say hello and to talk about the scripture, which I love to do. Um, it's been a rough week and today's not great, but I'm here and we get to talk about Paul's book to uh, letter to the church at Rome. And at the end of the first chapter where we were last week, he um, spoke about a lot of things that he saw were evil and broken in his world. And um, as I said last week, there are people who use one or two of those scripture passages to condemn people who um, find their love and their hope in uh, a person of the same gender. But it's interesting that, you know, as often as I've uh, read those commentaries about those scripture verses in Romans 1, you know, nobody bothered to go on to Romans 2. And so when I started reading that for today, I was like, yeah, we don't really talk about this one if we're using the other one to condemn others. Because what Paul goes on to say, and he's speaking um, particularly to uh, Jewish folk. Okay, just a notation and I'll talk more later. But Jewish folk um, were the chosen people of God. I mean, I guess that puts it there. They were chosen and God loved them no matter what, and they were getting to the kingdom in the sky no matter what, because God loved them as chosen people. And so they didn't worry about <laughs> so much what they did. Um, some of them didn't, and of course, that's all judgment. Well, here's what Paul is saying to them who feel as though they've got a special in with God. Um, and first he says, those people, the people we talked about last week who were um, sinning, breaking relationship with God, which is what sin is, is breaking relationship with God. Those people are on a dark spiral downward. But if you think that leaves you on high ground where you can point your finger at others, think again. Every time you criticize someone, you condemn yourself. It takes one to know one. Judgmental criticism of others is well is a well-known way of escaping detection of your own crimes and misdemeanors. But God isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smoke screens and holds you to what you've done. You don't think, do you, that just by pointing the fingers of others, you could distract God from seeing all your misdoings and from coming down hard on you? Or did you think that because he's such a nice God, he'd let you off the hook? Better think this one through from the beginning. God is kind, but God's not soft. In kindness, God takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into radical life change. You're not getting by with anything. Every refusal and avoidance of God adds fuel to the fire. The day is coming when it's going to blaze hot and high. God's fiery and righteous judgment. Make no mistake. In the end, you'll get what's coming to you. Real life for those who work on God's side. But for those who insist on getting their own way and taking their path of least resistance, fire. If you go against the grain, you get splinters regardless of which neighborhood you're from, what your parents taught you, or what schools you attended. But you, but if you embrace the way God does things, there are wonderful payoffs. Again, without regard to where you are from or how you are brought up, being a Jew won't give you an automatic stamp of approval. God pays no attention to what others say or what you think about you. God makes up his own mind. So um, the passage reminds me of my dad. He would always do this thing and he would always do this. If you're pointing one finger at you, four fingers are pointing back at yourself. So um, we were never a family who was allowed to point fingers to any degree. It was always that we needed to take a look at what we were doing and what we were saying. Um, the, and you know, um, some friends and I who, you know, raised children in this generation and are watching the next generation of children be raised. You know, we talk about if we ever came home from school and complained about the teacher or somebody giving us a problem, 
the first response out of a parent's mouth was, well, what did you do wrong? Well, how are you gonna make it right? Well, it's your responsibility. If something, you know, if somebody has a problem, you gotta fix it. <laughs> and now it seems like uh, in this generation, it's like, oh, my precious child would do nothing wrong. <laughs> but that's a judgment too, so we won't go there. But understand what Paul is saying is that um, even though uh, he might see and we might see um, evil and people who are living life um, apart from God's love and care and living in opposition to God, um, that's not where, although he's concerned about it, what he's concerned about is our lives in Christ. And to me, that's where I've always gone with that. Um, as I said, not trying to figure out how someone else's life is either good or bad in terms of what God wants of their life, but trying to keep true to my own path in terms of God's care of me. And then if somebody wants to, uh, hey, Darren, if somebody wants to talk about it or uh, try to um, figure out or help me pray with them about where God is leading them, okay, but I, I'm not great at just saying that person's wrong, that person's wrong, that person's wrong. And um, Paul here is specifically saying that the Jews in his culture, the Jews of his generation, the people that he has grown up and been raised with are not very concerned with God's approval because they believe as the chosen people that they automatically have God's approval. And furthermore, that those who are not the Jewish folk, not God's chosen people, that they automatically do not have God's approval. So it's this who's in, who's out again. And you think about our world in which, you know, people will tell you constantly who they think, uh, <laughs> who are the winners and who are the losers, who's in and who's out. And always it's them who's in. <laughs> and people who are different from them are out. It's one of the reasons that I'm very um, suspicious of judgment about any group of people, because generally what I find is that whatever group um, they believe, of a person talking to me, including them in their group, whatever group we belong to, um, our sins and our brokenness from God apparently isn't as important or named as much as somebody else's group. And uh, so, Paul continued to say, you know, don't think God's got diverted. Don't think God doesn't understand who you are. And this is what Paul profoundly believes, that for every human being on the planet, every single person who is on this planet being a child of God, God sees them clearly. And God wants relationship with them. And so when they break relationship, when they go their own way, um, God is hurt and God, God continues to let us make our own choices. Uh, the saying go, you know, hang ourselves with our own rope. So God is kind. And I think people also go to that, that, oh, God is so kind that God doesn't mind. Well, you know, probably I had very kind parents, parents who during my late teens and twenties were very, very forbearing, <laughs> forgave me of a lot of stupidity in those years and continued to um, try again to help me to see how to be an adult. Now, because they were kind to me and because they were loving, um, I certainly wouldn't say, oh, okay, so I get to get screwing up because they'll always take me back, which in fact, that was true of my parents. It didn't matter what happened to one of us kids they would always take us back. But that's not a way to have a relationship. It's certainly not a way to repay parents who are trying their best to help us to create a good life and an adult life. And so Paul's saying that here, that God is kind and God will take us by the hand into a life building um, and life affirming, life wonderful, um, that God can give us, but there, there's limits. You know, I love the way uh, Eugene Peterson puts it. You know, if you go against the grain, you get splinters. If you do stuff that's stupid, stupid, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not great, stupid and hurtful, 
then yeah, there's consequences to that. Again, in parenting classes I taught, um, one of the things that we said for young children was to let them feel the consequences of their behavior and not go and rescue them all the time so they could understand that there were consequences to behavior. And for me, that was this what Paul is saying here, that um, the Jewish folk who believe that they are the chosen people of God don't really think that the consequences are going to touch them in terms of eternal kingdom with God, but they get a get out of jail free card. I've been saying lately this week, I get a get out of jail free card because of cancer, because people are being very kind and um, forbearing with me. But uh, so Paul is just upset that, um, that these Jewish folk who again are his brothers and sisters in God, who were the community in which he grew up, who have this wonderful, wonderful history and relationship with God that is offered to them, um, count it as not that important because they'll always have it. And I guess if you look at some people in our world or um, hopefully look at ourselves, that oftentimes we have taken for granted God's loving care of us and um, perhaps not had as grateful of hearts because what we are told and what I believe is that God always loves us, that God always forgives us, and that God always desires for us to be in relationship with God. But that's no reason to take it for granted. Um, again, you think of parents, and if you live well with parents and you grow and you become an adult, Hopefully, also, you continue to um, have a good, strong, appropriate adult relationship with parents. Again, it's not exactly the same because our relationship with God is never that equal. But to understand the gratitude. And so Paul, who sees the Jewish community around him, um, judging and uh, naming quite clearly folks outside the chosen people, their sin, their brokenness, and giving judgment towards them says, eh, not so much. You know, don't think that you can divert God's attention from your sin by naming somebody else's. <laughs> and I think sometimes that's what we do, that God is focused on us and God knows us through and through. God understands our hearts and where we go and how we live. And for me, that's a very comforting thought because um, I want God to know my heart and I want my heart to be fully um, open and loving towards God. Knowing that every single day I mess up, every single day there's some brokenness that I create and that um, as I go to God and have a conversation about that, God is willing and able to lead me into a better life-affirming way of living. And so, um, Paul, in this passage, says, don't judge. <laughs> Basically, get yourself right with God and know that that relationship is a gift. And in God's kindness, God will lead us in new relationship and deeper relationship with God. But the brokenness that we create is our own, and we have to live with the consequences of those brokenness. So that's me today. I'm, I'm not great. Hopefully next week I'll be better. <laughs> and uh, those were the first 11 verses of the second chapter of Romans. So that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching, even on days when my chemo brain's a little bit stronger. But um, me and Doris wanted to say hi. Take care. Bye.